What up? What's up, everyone, and welcome to the fourth issue of Why Am I Nerd Presents Yo! What Up Comics, where each and every week we get together to talk about all things comics. From old to new, fan theories to what ifs, we got you covered. My name is Cameron James, and with me, as always, the golden voice of podcasting, Mr. Matthew Ferreira. <laughs> Thanks as always for having me. Dropping the full, the full biblical name on me. All right, let's see how it is. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. So we actually got ourselves involved in something new, which if you're listening to this, it's definitely already out. Yep. We put out a new show called Hero Cinema, where Matt and I have decided to put together a list of over 125 yeah. Superhero comic movies. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna do our best to do one a week of these, and um, basically it, it's gonna be our reaction to these films, mostly a lot of laughs, um, <laughs> yeah. and and go through and just kind of let you know if it's worth rewatching or you know kind of give a rating for the movie at the end. So we started off with uh, the Phantom, starring Billy Zane baby. and Catherine Zeta Jones. Yeah, and it was it's weird thinking that was four years before like the year two thousand because it's. Some parts of it are very dated, but it wasn't quite as bad without getting fully into our description yeah. later. It wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. No, I think I think the thing that was more of a shocker to me was when we randomly picked the next movie. <laughs> it just happened to be The Toxic Avenger. Which we had been joking about <laughs> for a while earlier that night. So and you can, funny and, how things work out. And I think we actually put our reaction to us uh, with the trailer. Yep. And it was interesting. Yeah, that trailer is something else. It looks like a Grindhouse movie. It, it looks like something that Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez cooked up and then threw out. But it's, it's a real movie that dropped in, was it, 84, I think? Yes. It was like Red Band before Red Band came out. Yeah, he, yeah he, pretty uh, much. Makes him, uh, what does he make, a milkshake out of someone's yeah, mouth? Yeah, he pours, <laughs> in the trailer, he pours ice cream and whipped cream into a dude's mouth and then lowers the, the uh, milkshake maker into the guy's mouth, which he does. I'm sure kills the shit out of him. I, I guess we'll find out when yeah. we get to that point. So, But last week, you were ripping apart Batman in the beginning of the show. Oh. Uh, so, I'm not going to say anything about Spider-Man. Okay. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Mm-hmm. But I do have a surprise later, oh, which everyone will be able to watch uh, on Opinions <laughs> Are For Assholes. And it's going to be a good one. I'm excited for it because I know what the hell it is. Uh, the Italian Anthony, you're going to be stuck doing it too. I'm not really giving you an option. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Sean will be doing it, so it'll be, uh, it'll be a nice little oh, God. nice little treat all right, all right, for me to you. Let's see what you got up your I, I, think, I think I got something good, but... Anyway, we got a bunch of great stuff on the shelf today, but once again, just a quick reminder, you can follow us on Instagram at whyamineerdofficial, facebook.com slash whyamineerd, and YouTube with a bunch of weird asterisks and symbols because we are not yet verified. Follow us, please. We're close. I think, you know, I think actually as long as we're on there for 30 days, I think we're, uh, I think we're kind right, don't, of don't say that in front of the people. Everyone, just follow us. Everything okay. you said was wrong. Follow okay. us, subscribe, <laughs> like, comment, please do everything. I tried. I tried, but <laughs> fuck it, whatever. So anyway, today we'll be talking about Enemy of the State, Wolverine, Enemy of the State, that is, not the Will Smith movie that came out in uh, the 90s. Oh, with Gene Hackman, yeah. Yeah, remember that one? That was an interesting one. <laughs> what if Marvel and DC heroes were actually killers? We'd also be ranking the cities we'd like to live in. We got a list of 10, but a couple of things from last week's episode that I just want to touch base on. Uh, we did mention the killing joke last week, and it was a laugh. It was at, a laugh, okay. It was a laugh at the end of that show. Um, which I thought was, uh, again, I totally thought it was a gunshot. Um, you know, I read an article on CBR yesterday about, like, the top ten comic book theories, and one of them is obviously that, you know, Batman, spoiler, kills a Joker at the end of that. I kind of think but he does. it was clarified he doesn't. Really? Yes. Alan so then why does the laughing stop? They're tired. Oh, That's what I read. That's it wasn't, I, Joker doesn't have the same name. As uh, as Batman's mom, like Joker's mom. No, no, this is, this is this is a knockoff of uh, of, of um, what's it called? Uh, Dawn of Justice. Yeah, it's such yeah, a no, dramatic name one. for the movie. This is, this They're fighting each other. But you know what I did? Not to get off topic before we do start this, I did watch uh, the Red Sun. It was on DC Universe on it was a good Wednesday. Book. I haven't seen the movie, but the book was good. The book was really good. Uh, they definitely nailed the book almost um, to the T. Okay, I thought they did a really good job with it. Uh, you know, the whole Batman stuff. There's a part in the movie I was telling you about that you said you don't remember in the graphic novel, which I thought it was in the graphic novel when they first introduced Batman. Um, 
but I guess you didn't remember that. I know it's been a while since I've since I've read Red Sun, which sounds weird to say, but Red and Red. It's been a while since I read the book. No, it was. I, I liked it. I liked the movie. I thought they did a good job with it. Um, I thought they did better than uh, we had said last week. How we we were talking about uh, the death of Superman. And the yeah, reign of where Superman. it's like, yeah, where it's like, death of Superman went well. Reign of the Superman was kind of like, yeah, all right. Yeah, so I rewatched Reign of the Superman uh, last week as well, and I could see, first of all, when he comes back wearing a black suit, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, um, he kind of looked like Keanu Reeves. I can see that. In, I can like, actually see that. That makes sense. I thought that was a little kind of uh, a little strange um, that they did that. They definitely had some weird shit in that movie. Uh, I know they, like, with the whole, uh, w- like, the Superman is really Superboy. Yeah. Like, he was, like, this emo kid. Yeah, but like, he I was, don't like, know if he was emo, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, like, that guy was emo. <laughs> he was so emo. Is emo still a thing, though? Like, or is it just something else now? Is that just Gen I, Z? I don't know. I mean, I thought that was pretty <laughs> weird, and then I also thought that, I also thought that something that was strange in that movie was, uh, and I, again, I don't remember this in the book, Superman has a shotgun at the end. Does he? Yeah. I don't remember that. That's I didn't weird. either. So I was like, maybe this wasn't in the, when he's when he's fighting. I guess the clone of himself. Oh, uh, yeah, because he's not fully powered up. That's right. And he just that's right. Pulls out this like shotgun out of nowhere, which yeah. is kind of like like what? okay. Yeah, I thought that was a little uh, a little strange. But um, all in all, if you guys go want to go back and watch that movie, I would definitely recommend watching. Like I said, the Death of Superman, Rain of Superman. You can it, it follows the original one. Like to the T. Like if you don't see the first one, don't watch the second one. Yeah, it's like one of those. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things. And uh, you know, they did the whole thing where last week I said um, they mentioned that they killed you know Wonder Woman, Batman, Green Lantern, all those. Remember I said they after apparently in Reign of Superman they all get quote quote killed, but they just go. Into, like, a different universe yeah, or something, right? Yeah, it's, like, like, one like of those a, stupid yeah. bullshit things. But um, just a couple of notes I just wanted to touch base on last week. But anyway, we're going to dive right into Wolverine, Enemy of the State. All right, so Wolverine, Enemy of the State is easily my favorite Wolverine story of all time. I think it, it hits on all cylinders. It really nails everything you love about the character. But to give the background, it was written by Mark Millar, who also authored a couple of my other favorite books, Ultimates Volumes 1 and 2, Fuck Volume 3, that has nothing to do with Mark Millar, illustrated by John Romita Jr., uh, who's a legend in the industry, and it collects Wolverine uh, 20 through 32 from 2003. So Wolverine's brainwashed by the Ninjas of the Hand. He then slices and dices his way through fro- through foes and friends alike, I swear I can talk, ultimately <laughs> resulting in the death of an X-Man. After he's captured and reprogrammed, Wolverine is sent against his former masters, but amid an orgy of death and destruction, is even the fiercest mutant alive a match for the deadly stare of the Gorgon. Yeah, so I will give it to you 110%, just so if anybody wants to see it, this is the book. We highly recommend it. It is an awesome, awesome, awesome read. Awesome read. There is definitely some things in this book, though, that if you don't know other stuff about Marvel, you're going to be like, what? Yeah, there's a few a few what organizations come in, like The Hand, who's mostly, uh, they mostly show up in, like, Daredevil books, um, which actually, there's a Daredevil cameo in here, and they, they explain to you that Daredevil has a long history with The Hand, which, while I'm on that really quick, every cameo that's in this book was done so well, you actually I'm going to call feel, bluff on that. What? I'm going to call 100 How? Bluff. Every cameo that thing Spider-Man so cameo is so stupid. That's a, that's a 100% you. of Spider-Man that thing was, to do. That was that's so 100% dumb. of Spider-Man thing to like, so you okay, dumb. Wolverine? He pops so up dumb. at the end. Him First of all, that's a spoiler. Damn, him is, you drop the microphone because you're getting that excited. <laughs> but him and his damn jockstrap packing fucking tighty whitey That's a weird thing. Why are you so fucking, obsessed with Spider-Man's underwear tell, when Batman what? wears his on the outside of his costume? Okay, first of all, Batman does not wear underwear, bro. He wears underwear They're on the outside of his underwear. costume. Fuck you and fuck your goddamn <laughs> web, web swinging bitch. His cameo was so lame. How excited were you when you thought he was dead, though? When? In the in earlier in the book, they're oh, like, oh, Spider Man, yeah, I they're was like, so pumped. <laughs> Fuck this. They're I'm like, so they're like, Spider Man. I mean, Wolverine you. killed Spider Man. I was like, no, he didn't. I knew yeah. you were pumped up for that. I don't know why you hate my, my but, friendly neighborhood Spider Man so so much. I mean, we can go over the list of the ten ways that Spider Man has died in the past, and guess what? They're a lot more corner than Batman's because Batman he's only died by an Omega Ray. He didn't even die then. Yep, yep, that's that's exactly, a different that's dimension. Exactly. There's shenanigans every time. Or Hold he on. blows himself up. <laughs> or he blows himself up. Yeah, because he can't because he can't handle a depowered okay. Superman. He couldn't finish the job. We always get off topic. We do. We really do. Anyway, 
Um, so I thought the cameos were handled very well. Like when he goes to meet the Fantastic Four, it's fleshed out. You feel there's a, a long standing connection there. Sue Storm goes off on him at one point. Um, even the Daredevil thing felt very fleshed out. You knew that there was depth with each of the characters. It kind of touched base on um, Elektra and Daredevil's relationship at one point. And then, of course, everything with the X-Men, you, you know, he's obviously got connections there. So I thought that was one of the the nuances that was just really, really well done throughout this entire story. I will 100% agree with you, except for the Spider-Man one. I thought <laughs> I thought they all did did really, really, really well. Uh, just to brief, too, the whole, pretty much the plot of this story just so everybody knows and again you know we've, spoilers we've, if you haven't yeah read it. we've said spoilers a million times um it pretty much follows this guy ichiro who's a cab driver for an okay, unknown, oh you're talking unknown, about it. so yeah it, yeah, it so bookends not, yeah the story is bookended by the story of ichiro who contacts wolverine because his son is kidnapped and they believe his son is kidnapped because he's uh he works for a rich businessman they never and, give a name Right, they never reveal the name. Um, And basically, this guy exhausts all resources. Like, I've got to call my cousin's ex-husband, who just so happens to be Wolverine. So um, the whole time, you're kind of thinking, like, oh, damn, this sucks. This kid's taken by accident. And then Wolverine shows up to rescue the kid, and it turns out it's all a plot just to get Wolverine, basically, for this this Hydra thing, which is really sad, honestly. Because, like, it's revealed relatively early on that the kid's dead, not coming back. And, like, Wolverine is just kind of living with that guilt. Like, the whole time, you know, he's been kind of a uh, a reluctant weapon in the past. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Wolverine can fight. He's the best series at what he does. But he never really gets a chance to do anything else. And, you know, he comments a few times throughout the book that, you know, he, he carries that pain with him all the time. And that's what makes him such a cool and complex character is that he's got so much going on. That while he, at one point, they give the body count. In the movie, in the movie, in the book, and it's like in Multiple the thousands, times. yeah. Even at the end, too. They yeah, he it. he racks up a ton of kills in this book. They really don't hold back. But like you know, the whole time he's like, yeah, I, I wish I could love someone. Like everything I touch falls to shit. And it's, yeah, I mean, I, I I thought that I, I thought that when, when it came to that, like the the thing that in this book that kind of really threw me for Lubus, they did. We've talked about this before, like weird, like uh, dialogue and like font. Like font printing. Yeah. They did a good job with this because when he's thinking to himself, it's in brown. Yeah, and it's... It, that's but who's too, the green? So the green, I was actually waiting to talk to you about this because I think that's the... I don't think it's Hydra talking to him directly. I think it's a reprogrammed version of him arguing with himself. Because it, it that if there's anything in this book that I think they kind of tried to get away with it but didn't really work is for me at least again this is not me bashing this book i'm just trying to find something to pick a pick apart on it <laughs> when he talks to himself sometimes he's like contradicting the actions that he's doing yeah because he doesn't want to do it it's not a voluntary thing yeah so it's it's very it's weird but i think it's supposed to be weird i think he's supposed to be kind of arguing with himself because sometimes you'll even see like the boxes are arguing with each other like mm-hmm. the yellow box the yellowish brownish box is usually the good one but there was times he had negative thoughts in there too yeah. so it kind of just showed that you know he was a little bit confused as to what was going on he couldn't keep his thoughts straight and even though what he was doing wasn't voluntary it was still you know something he had to mentally process yeah that was the only thing like a couple times when reading it i was like what like why he's doing this but he's actually telling himself not to do it so i get the whole reprogramming thing and uh you know that that pretty much goes back to i i get and the other two that's kind of weird so you had the hand hydra and the the The, night the white oh my god we have we have it written down it's it's complicated but like the the legion of the white Dawn Dawn, Dawn, white dawn of the white light pardon me yeah which is obviously very complicated and they don't really make too many appearances beyond this uh to the best of my knowledge but dawn of the white light was the gorgons gang and then they team up with hydra who also teams up with the hand because baron von strucker feels that he's losing his grip on the hand because his old ass creepy wife um is basically removing it from him so he's kind of throwing a last ditch effort in with all these other groups to try and um subvert the superhuman community and he's basically using the best killing machine in that community which is wolverine to kill everyone else so they can bring them back as superhuman terrorists yes in the lump sum of things yeah that's there it is. That's, that's, that's the plot basically and it is complicated but it also shows you how 
deadly Wolverine is and how respected he is among the Marvel heroes. Because at one point, they're like, we've got to put all the big guns away. They're like, Iron Man can't be out there. Hulk can't be out there. Get a lock on Thor. Like, find out what's going on with everyone. Street level guys got some protection, but they're like... Wolverine can do literally everything. He's the perfect killing machine. We can't risk someone getting jumped and then falling to the dark side. Then we've got, you know, an even more powerful mutant up there. Like Wolverine said, sneaky powerful. But like if you lose someone like Iron Man, who as smart as he is, as much technology as he has, could wipe out, you know, a good portion of the planet relatively quickly. Yeah, that was a... And they explained that pretty well, too. It's not like, why why aren't these other people coming out? You know, and they... I think in the order that he fights everybody i think he goes to the the fantastic four is not first they're up there because they wanted uh reed's technology which is terrifying in scope to think about so at one point in the book for everyone who's you know following along with us wolverine breaks into the baxter building fights every single member of the fantastic four and manages to steal this hard drive which contains i think it's eight thousand of reed richards ideas which if you know anything about reed richards is a terrifying concept this guy's constantly thinking on another level doesn't even have time for his family how much he focuses on other aspects of you know science and creating new things and the one big threat um in the book before they get to the anti-galactus robot which you know was the shenanigans um no <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a more ago. there's a bigger shenanigans for yeah you. well he's got this uh terraforming device that they're planning on using in deserts and stuff and then eventually on the moon and mars that wolverine's like well what if i blow this up in westchester this will destroy a huge chunk of new york so that's like it, it it's in effect turned into a weapon so they're basically weaponizing all of reed richard's ideas or the fact that he's building a 300 foot android that eats gods well, yeah, I mean, you gotta have something like that. Like, why wouldn't you have that? Come on, what the fuck. Like <laughs> it's that, that, that was a little it's bit. That was a little ridiculous. It's when not I saw, our shenanigans. It's our shenanigans engine of the day. I don't know. But it's it is bad. Oh no, it's pretty bad. It's pretty fucking bad. But it's basically the same as the anti galactus. You know what I mean? It's more or less. It's it's absolute shenanigans. But most of the things that come out of Reed Richards' head are. Yeah, I mean, like the fact that him, Iron Man, and. Who the hell is the other oh, Ant Man slash oh, Yellow yeah, Jacket okay, ha- slash the, Giant uh, Man. Hank they have Pym. the hidden. Uh, yeah, they've got this like virtual place thing. that they go to create all their ideas. Like it's fucking nuts. Yeah, it's, I wonder what the tax payments are on that fucking place. <laughs> so, but anyway, so pretty much in this book, you get introduced to the Gorgon, the Gorgon, and the Gorgon is the Gorgon is one of my favorite villains from the moment I was introduced to him because Wolverine's sitting there and he gets you know at one point impaled. He's like. How the hell did I get stabbed? No one's that fast. And the Gorgon's behind him like, I know what you're thinking, but the Gorgon is that fast. And it's, he shows up, uh, Gorgon um, shows up in another book. Uh, oh, well, no, I can't think of the name of it. it. Where Nick Fury basically has his own team of like superhumans. Yeah, you got that? What's the book that the other Gorgon It's like shows Secret, up? Secret Warriors, maybe? Secret Wars? Secret Warriors. It might be something along those lines. I'd have to look it up. I should have checked before this, actually. But it's he goes back to that line, like where he's like, "No, it's like you know, there's a speedster, and Gorgon slices her arm off, and she's like, how the hell?'" And he's like, "I know what you're thinking, but the Gorgon is that fast." So is, the like, Gor- it's, it was, is that taking place before this? No, that's after. Uh, we'll get okay. to that. Yeah, I know it's shenanigans. It is shenanigans. That's a little but, weird. So yeah. just so everybody knows, so pretty much the Gorgon. He's, he's a ninja master, class two superhero strength. Uh, pretty much. They ripped this one off of Medusa. Where well, that's looks, why he's called you, the Gorgon. Medusa's he looks in the, the eye, you know? turn into stone. Uh, he he actually s- belongs to the Splinter Group called the Dawn of the White Light, which we mentioned before. Yeah. And just some other quick facts about so him. So he's, he's a super genius to the point that yes. uh, some of these facts you're going to read off speak to. He spoke his first words within two weeks of being born. He was walking after three weeks, reading and writing by his first birthday. Um, six years old, he composed his first opera and attempted suicide. And at 13, he devised, um, I'm sorry, the, six years old, he was, he attempted suicide for the second time, which is what tripped me out in the book. Um, 13 I, I it was the first. It was the second time where they, they like casually dropped it in there. Really? Messing up I too. missed yeah. that. Uh, at 13, he devised a math formula to prove God was real. Um, so this guy is on a completely different level than damn near anybody else. Cause I think they, at one point, they give you the materials to do the math in the book, and I think he's about 18 or 19 during right now? this. Yeah, Currently? like in, in the actual Enemy of the State book. And then he's, he's banging the 175-year-old? Yeah, and he's banging a 175-year-old wrinkled, gross, old prune who's <laughs> apparently super evil 
um, basically turns Baron Von Strucker into a cuckold. Like, this guy just has to watch his wife get banged by another dude all the time and eventually relinquish control of the hand to him. Yes. It is, like, and a lot of what we're saying... I apologize in advance, because if you're listening and you don't know this book, it sounds like we're, like, going on a bunch of different tangents. But again, it's handled so well in the book that when you're reading through it, you really do get sucked in. Because as ridiculous as it all sounds, it just plays off so well. The The writing is just incredible throughout this whole thing. It's just a very, very, you know, just great ride, honestly. It is. I mean, probably, about mid, probably before midway through, you, you find out that eventually... Eventually, Captain America shows up. You find out that uh, Wolfgang uh, von, von Stricker, um, pretty much, like you said before, he has the ultimatum where he has to either get Wolverine on the side or they're going to, I guess, you know, pretty much kill him. Yeah. And then the Gorgon is going to end up taking control over... Which over this is, all the organizations combined, pretty but much. This the is, hand this is what's kind of weird light. to me, which kind of threw me off, was they talk about Elizabeth, his wife, Elizabeth von Stricker, and... Uh, how she's kind of in control, but she's, she's like not. been running things behind the show. So she's almost like the like. It's weird. I don't know how to describe it. I almost want to say it's like if you look at like England, it's like there's the Queen and there's Parliament. You know what I mean? Where it's like Parliament no. like kind of runs everything. That's the way. That's the way I was. I can best describe it. Where like she kind of almost has final say with stuff, but there's someone else running the day to day operations at the top of the ladder, which and is essentially the husband. Correct. And but like she can come in at any time and be like, no, this is ending. Like I'm not funding this anymore because she's fucking 175. And they say at one point she's like, her lovers contained like three presidents and four kings, something like that. Like she, you know, has a laundry list of of crazy things she's done just from being that old and that influential. Yeah, they very vaguely touch base on that. Like that's the thing. Like sometimes like. You know, if you don't know much about the story, they kind of throw it in there. Yeah. And that's like, that was kind of... That like, was another, definitely one, because like I had loose no idea who she was prior to this. Although they do mention during the book that she's so well-connected and well-to-do and just has such an influence over things that S.H.I.E.L.D. didn't know she existed until about a, a week into the story. Really? Yeah. Um, was it Electra says that at one point to... Uh, I forget who she says it to, but they mentioned kind of early on. Oh, that's another thing we didn't bring up yet, though. Electra... Uh, who, you know, has strong ties to Daredevil, super assassin ninja, also has a pretty prominent role in this. I'd say she's like a... She's, she's probably, probably the second, second main character, yeah. yeah. Like, she kind of has a lot going on. She's got strong ties to the hand, and it's, stuff gets wild in this book. Like, there's a lot of limbs flying all the time, especially with the two of them being, you know, mega assassins. Yeah, it's definitely... they, they And they brought her in well. Yeah. I thought they made her look like a badass. Oh, they absolutely did. You know, I thought they did a really good job with her. Uh, she's in the Netflix show. Yeah, she is. They don't do as good of a job with her, but um, it's which isn't to take anything away from the show. I just expected a little bit more. Although one thing I did notice that they kind of messed up on, Electra is traditionally Hispanic in the books, and she was um, probably because this was this came out right around the same time as uh, the Daredevil movie, where they made her Greek in the movie when where Jennifer Garner played her. They specifically reference her as Greek in this book. They which did? I thought was interesting, yeah. I didn't, I didn't remember seeing that part. But it's a, it came out right around the same time as the Daredevil movie, and I thought that was kind of... It's funny how they kind of sync up comics to the movies sometimes to try and engage, you know, new readers. You know, they think someone's going to come off one movie and go into the books. I mean, I don't... I think if you watch... Oh, yeah, you find us anything, bros? I don't know. Yeah, you guys were just... Oh, you can just jump on a roll. I didn't want to jump <laughs> no, in, just, you know just, what I mean? Just, just cut us off. We don't really care. All right, so the Gorgon, you want to know what else... Yeah. It was in. So, according to this, he's in 847 issues of all wow. different what? comics. Wow. I did not know he appeared in that much. Well, yeah. He's so a his lot of stuff. first appearance was Fantastic Four, issue 44. The gentleman's, the gentleman's name is Gorga. Wait, what year is that? Did it say? Of his first comic? Yeah. I uh, got nothing on the year. Wait yeah. a minute. That might be... There's more than one Gorgon. I forgot. There's the Gorgon that's within um, the, uh, oh, God, who are the, the Inhumans. There's a yes. Gorgon in Inhumans. That might be. Is that who they're referencing? Missing, no. that yes. Might, yeah. Okay. So there's two. It's it's tough to, this is uh, Tommy, T-O-M-I, Shishido, S-H-I-S-H-I-D-O, I think is how you play his name. In this book? Yeah. How the hell do you remember that? 
it's weird. I got a I got a good memory when it comes to stuff. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I, mean, I, I have to write all my notes down because I forget literally <laughs> e- everything. But so, uh, and let's know if you find that. I, I think it's I th- we he you think it's Secret Warrior? I think it's I'm gonna I'm gonna double check on my phone too. No offense to the Italian over here. Just gonna double. Hey, check. you know more more comments than I do. <laughs> so, but anyway, so pretty much the thing too with this is eventually midway through, Electra figures out. Um, what happened to Wolverine? You know, she says, oh, he's been, you know, pretty much killed and resurrected by the hands. Yes, sorry, I just found it. It is Secret Warriors. Is it? Which is when Nick Fury has his own group of, like, you know, elite people with abilities he's kind of brought together, and they end up having to go up against the Gorgon at one point. And he's in it? Yeah. Team White? What? I'm sorry? Team White? Team White? Secret Warriors, Team White. Oh, Team White. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, so Electra ends up figuring out what's going on with Wolverine, and she's like, all right, he's, you know, brain, he was killed, resurrected, brain off by the hand, and he's yeah. doing all this shit. Which, to me, that too, all right, she's kind of like, oh, by the way. This yeah, she's like, also like, which, it makes sense, but you need to know the history of the character a little bit. That's that's one where they could have put a little bit more groundwork in. But, um, eh, like, it's almost like it was kind like of weird. It was kind of. It but it's, old. it's funny, though, because when she reveals that she's, like, under super deep cover, um, Wolverine's like, so wait, this whole time, like, you know, you were, you were still on our side? He's like, yeah. And she I'm was. sorry, she's like, yeah. And then he's like, but you dropped a shield helicarrier through, like, 200 people. And Alex was like, I was under really, yeah. really deep cover. I'm like, <laughs> damn, like that's like yeah. the body count in this book is insane. Like a lot of people die. I mean, she definitely does. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? When, like when she, cause she gets killed, quote yeah. quote, towards the end. And then, well, actually, midway, it's probably like the turning point of the book. It's probably like, yeah, I'd like, say so. She gets no, killed around the time Wolverine gets, but she really back. doesn't. She yeah. like doesn't work on me. I've already been killed. Yeah, I've she's like, I've been, like, she's like, hell has few secrets left for me. I think is her line. I did think, I did think though, they probably could have because eventually when they capture Wolverine, I thought that part, where, like you know, Captain America shows up, hits him with the freaking shield, the shield and it's yeah. like, all right, cool, taking care of her. I'll see you later. <laughs> he just like Mike drops and walks away. Yeah, basically. Um, and then they pretty much the the uh, the X Men that they reference in the in the uh, oh in the s- the walkthrough, yeah. What, what do you want to say? It's North Star. Yeah, which you have to know when you read something like that, it's not going to be a major X Men. He's not taking out Colossus or you know Emma Frost or Cyclops. Like it was North Star who Wolverine actually at one point says in the book, "You've never been better than B list anyway." Yeah, like he, he also <laughs> references Superman in this book. He does. Yeah, which he references. I thought was interesting because I didn't know, like when DC and Marvel, I've obviously they've made reference before. I said last week in the in the Batman Lego movie the the. The password in the back cave is Iron, Iron Man, Man sucks. sucks yeah. You know, are those are those digs? Do you think those digs are intentional, or do you think they're just kind of like, all right, like? I think it's intentionalness. Really? I don't think Wolverine knows who knows Superman exists in another universe, but I think DC Comics probably exists in the Marvel universe. So it's just a reference, like, okay, this guy's like borderline invincible. So you're saying you said. don't think it's a dig? Oh no, I don't think it's. Oh, sorry, no, no, I don't like, think it's. Yeah, because like when they make when they make a, funny jokes like that, like I get it that there's, it's competition, like yeah. they're different. They're different, you know. I guess whatever you want to say, it'd be like two different networks, like ABC yeah, they're, and CBS they're rivals, whatever. competitors, yeah, but all that, yeah. They do kind of do that every now and then. I mean, because they have done, like, like I said, they've done crossovers before. They did Superman, they did yeah. uh, Batman and um, Spider Man, which we talked about. Yeah, you know, I know Batman. Batman has fought aliens, but I think that was a that was a Dark Horse comic. Aliens. It might have been. Was, yeah. was originally about Dark Horse. I, I don't know if DC owns Dark Horse. I know DC. Dark Horse, I think, is still. A, oh no, Image is definitely separate. I'm not sure about Dark Horse. Dark well, Horse, I, I would think is. Vertigo, was Beef Vendetta. Hmm. Vertigo got bought by DC. DC then turned it into the, the Black Label. Oh, did they? Which is really good. If it's definitely more mature and it's it's awesome. I just. Uh, bought the new Harleen uh, thing. It's a new, it's like they're, it's a graphic novel, but it's like a spin on Harley Quinn. They have gotcha. like three different versions of it. Oh, but, it's uh, like her. They did like, they did like Batman Damned, which was like a huge big deal because like it was like the first time that someone ever drew Batman with a dick. Oh, yeah. So they what? drew it. They drew, they, quick side note. So in Batman Damned, they have a scene where Batman's, he's pretty much getting beat up the whole time, yada, yada, typical Batman style. And he's, like, walking through. He has, like, a secret back cave in the middle of, like, fucking nowhere. Of course. Why and he just, like, they? drops off his clothes. He just, like, walks in, and someone drew his penis. And it was, like, a big deal. 
of course, this guy over here got the uh, original first print. You know why? Because that's just going to be worth something eventually. So then... What, the first printing of Batman's dick? Yes. Like, you just... Yep, you I sold, got it. So hold on, hold on. I got on. it. For I full reference first, here, yes. you said... This is the first printing of Batman stick. I need to own this. Yes. I went out of your way to buy the first edition. Yes. Of Batman stick, which is probably yes. going to end up being the name of this episode. <laughs> yes, I did do that. Batman stick and Wolverine enemy of the stick. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. So, but then, so they when they printed out the second issue, there was so much controversy about it, they got rid of it. So that dick is going to be worth. <laughs> Thousands. <laughs> the one most day. expensive fictional dick in the history of fictional dicks. Well, I own that. <laughs> I own that dick. I own that dick. But back <laughs> to the co- topic of conversation here. So, how do you, how do you segue <laughs> like that? You can't do that. Can you t- can't talk about Batman's dick. <laughs> I can't. All right, no, sorry. We gotta move forward. What? No, I'm like what? Like, <laughs> I did that. I someone referenced the dick. So ten thousand dollars. Someone, was, someone was sitting there like, oh, okay, I gotta draw Batman in the back cave. You know what? What if he just hung down? Like, we'll put some balls in there, a little bit of hair, boom, and we're gonna print it. And like everyone was like, yeah, sure. I'll Everyone's show like, you later if you want to see. I don't know if I want to see that. I really don't think I do. That's. You can Google it if you want. Why would I go? Why would I leave that in my computer trail? I mean, did you see what my computer trail was the other night when I was trying to find stupid ass references <laughs> no. to Spider Man? Yeah, that's uh, anyway, it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Anyway. So anyway. <laughs> All right, so Sorry. moving on. Um, to, to kind of wrap things up, there's an awesome final battle between Wolverine when he's basically completely outmatched by the Gorgon, and he has to use a, a last ditch move to win, which we actually won't spoil. But it's a very good, very good book through and through. Great writing. Story's fast paced. You really don't get bored at any point through it. If you do get the special edition graphic novel, um, you oh, know, yeah, like we, we could, have we here. Could, we could talk about that if you want. I'm thinking where you're going with this. Oh, yeah. The, the very last, uh, the end of the book. I can't quite find exactly where it is in here. But um, there's a special side story about Wolverine during World War II, which, if I'm correct, influenced uh, the Wolverine movie, The Wolverine, the uh, the second film starring Hugh Jackman, which is actually really cool. Um, I didn't like this. I thought I don't know why it's in the book, to be honest. I thought it was a cool story, but I don't it, know why it was in it. It was more like a horror story. Yeah, a little about bit. It. Like, he, he's actually, like... It's more about him during World War II. He doesn't just even doing talk. All kinds. Well, yeah, but he does it to freak out the uh, the guards, right? Yeah. And then doesn't isn't he at one point? I didn't reread it for this part, so correct me if I'm wrong. At one point, doesn't he? Uh, he's there for like the bomb dropping in Japan. Am I crazy on that? Uh, I don't think. They or is that a different story? They didn't reference it. In I don't this? think they. So it's just it. him in the concentration camp. Yeah, and like which was, he dies, comes back, dies, yeah. comes back. It's just like it's like slender. Yeah, man and he's stupid he, like that. Yeah, but he does it on purpose to to pretty much fuck with the the Nazi guards because. Fuck Nazis. So would you recommend this to a new reader? Yes. If you're if you, you have some kind of I, I did actually in the past. My my good friend Ben um was looking for a Wolverine comic to read. I was like, you've got to read Enemy of the State. I was like, this is an absolute must as far as I'm concerned. If you have any interest in Wolverine as a character, this is a great book to start with. That's interesting because I feel like, like we said before, if you don't know who Hydra is, if you don't know who the hand is, but you're you still, be lost. you get enough of an idea. And funny, actually, funny story about the hand. Um, did you watch Ninja Turtles when you were younger? Yeah. Who did they fight? The hand, don't no, they? The foot. The foot. The foot. But it's the a hand. ripoff because Ninja Turtles. I is... only said the hand because I figured that was the answer. I really had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so Ninja Turtles is a little bit of a ripoff between Daredevil and uh, the X Men. And then they go up, they're like, you know, they're, they're trained ninjas, they're in New York. Um, instead of being trained by Stick, they're trained by Splinter. Um, they're teenage mutants like the X-Men. And then they go up against the foot instead of the hand, whereas Daredevil fights the hand, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fight the foot. So there's a lot of subtle references in there to uh, a couple Marvel characters. And they do, they do do a pretty interesting job with... Um, with- with like, uh, I actually have no idea. What I, was, I was just paying. I was totally just paying attention to something else and just letting you talk. I'm like, yeah, I gotta chime in here. You're so. thinking about Batman's stick again. Don't worry. Yeah, stole my joke. <laughs> <laughs> We're both on the same page, right there. I have a picture of it. You if, found the dick. If you wanna see it, I, you good. found the dick. I'm good. There it is, Matt. <laughs> Why did they do that? Why was that necessary? I own that. Oh, God. And you're proud of it. It's probably hanging I, up somewhere in your bedroom. It's not. I actually kept the book in the seal. <laughs> <laughs> you zoomed in. <laughs> oh, my I 
at least they dark darkened it out. But I mean, um, I guess all's fair that ends fair because uh, you know how long have we been looking at half naked chicks in comics? Like forever. They never. Very few female characters are well clothed. Actually, that's another reference to the book. Kitty Pride, one of the few not scantily clad characters in comics, you know, like, ever, uh, makes a comment about um, Emma Frost because Emma's yeah. like, oh, I've got laryngitis from using my telepathy. She's like, well, maybe if you cover it up a yep. little bit. Because Emma, <laughs> Emma Frost has the therapy session yeah. in, like, the, in, like, the sky or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but here's something else that I wanted to talk about that before we get into the next thing, I have a, I have a issue about this. So I read an article the other day. you didn't get to see Wolverine what? stick? No. <laughs> Off the dick topics. We're back on something. So... In the 90s, okay, someone thought it was a good idea to take the X-Men and make them into two different groups. I forget where in this article. Maybe it was Screen Ran or something like that. And they separated them into the gold group and the blue group. Didn't that happen again recently? If I'm what not happened mistaken? in the 90s? That's what I'm talking yeah. about right now. So hold the okay. fuck on. Right. So I have a question. Who the fuck came up with these groups? Because you have group gold which is Storm, Archangel, Colossus, Bishop, Iceman, Jean Grey, or Blue, which is Cyclops, Wolverine, Rogue, Gambit, Beast, Psylocke, and Jubilee. Who thought so, that... Now, the article was which group was better. Oh, that's... Where's in terms the of argument? Raw, in terms of raw power, it's the gold group. Are you kidding me? Storm, Jean Grey... I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in reference to as a as a... As a comic book fan and as a, someone that, you know, reads comic books and has even just like the generic public has no idea who the fuck. And do you know anybody on the gold team? No. Do you know anybody on the blue team? Yeah. Where's the argument? Well, the gold Where's team, the argument that the I'm blue sorry, team, Who's on the gold team again? Maybe I got Storm, them six in my head. Storm, Archangel, Colossus, Bishop, Iceman, and Jean Grey. So you, you, my thinking is. The only thing I could think of that would make sense for this is that the gold team is massively overpowered compared to the blue team. But the blue team is kind of the classic X-Men that you'd expect to see all the time. The gold team probably handles the really high-level shit because Storm, I think, is a... If she's not Omega-level, she's borderline Omega-level. Jean Grey, especially with the Phoenix, is Omega-level. Iceman is Omega-level. It makes sense for those guys to handle massive, like... Stupid, ridiculously big threats like, I don't know, alien armadas coming towards Earth. Yeah, but my argument is who comes up with these teams? Who says, let's make a comic book based on the gold team and the blue team? Who the fuck's buying the gold well, that's team? What I'm saying. Without, that's what I'm saying. Without knowing, I mean, Storm does have a big following. Storm is very popular. But I don't know if that's enough to, necessarily enough to carry its own book. But without knowing anything about this specifically, I would think that's the way they split it up. Like, that's that uh, they're handling, like, the brood's about to invade Earth or something. It's going to be the gold team that handles that because they're handling massive, massive events. And then your classic characters are on the blue team, the ones that everybody knows, and they're just dealing with regular run-of-the-mill sentinel shit. Yeah, but, I mean, as... That's a guess, though. Again, I really don't as, know. like, a, someone that's going to... A buy, casual like, reader, yeah, like yeah you're, you're not gonna, gonna you're not gonna buy anything about the gold team. Well, unless that's where covers come in, though. They always say don't judge a book by its cover, but the exception to that rule is with comic books because there's a lot of comic books I've bought based on the cover and been wildly disappointed or confused with the story. Yeah, I just bought the Grim Knight and like every single freaking variant cover there was. Yeah, with see? The Batman, but I don't. So know, I I just thought that this was an interesting read. That is kind of like, crazy. I was like, who the fuck actually thought that? To put to put these teams together, that's like saying 90s like were a weird time for books. So. I mean, that's like saying like if you were to pick a team between like uh, I'm I don't know much about sports, but you know, in, in basketball with like Michael Jordan or uh, not LeBron James, Kobe <laughs> Bryant, stuff like that. Like you're gonna pick that over like I yeah, know, like whoever, Carl like, Malone and like you like know Carl a Malone. couple of Charles Barkley, like some guys that were like yeah, good, so. very good. You know, still Hall of Famers, but like not necessarily household names like the other ones. That's a fourth, I that's a fourth and one podcast topic. Yeah, that's, not, that's coming not, not here where it comes to comic, <laughs> comic book land. But I don't know. I just thought that that was a really interesting find that I found the other day. But So our next topic, we're going to talk about what if what if Marvel and DC heroes were actually killers? So oh, yeah, a, you, a lot of a lot of the, 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 the main heroes in uh, both Marvel and DC, whether it be cinematic or cin- I guess it would be cinematic. Is that the word or cinema? Cin- and the, the, the in cinematic both the MCU universe. And the yeah. cinematic universe. You know, and the, you have yeah. Batman, Spider Man, Superman, uh, Robin, uh, X twenty three, which is to me that she doesn't that, kill. She 
Definitely I don't know, kill. man. That's, they, they, apparently that's not. Iffy. Green Green Lantern, like those, they all don't kill. Yeah, which, again, DC characters have a weird pact where they don't kill anyone, which is why they have so much random bullshit. Like that's why Gotham's such a shithole. Like Batman needs to take some of these guys out. He really does. Like you can't tell me you got the Joker dead to rights. You're like, I'll let you go this time. Like no, like you need to kill that guy. I mean, I also don't think that, you know, talking to Batman first, he's throwing. You're going to tell me he's never accidentally killed somebody. Oh, it's absolute bullshit. I mean, he's it's, definitely it's, killed at least some, even in the games. I was saying, you, know, you play the Arkham Knight, games, he kills people by accident all the time. Yeah. Like, and in Arkham Knight, time. he has a tank, which those are not, you're not getting shot with oh, rubber bullets. Gets, yeah, well, no, and even, yeah, the rubber Come bullets on. coming out of a 40 cal. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're not okay. <laughs> you're not fucking okay. No. But not to mention, let's say, you know, he, he pulls like a mean, uh, like, Tokyo Drift style move and you just happen to be there. Not only are you getting hit by what's, what's like a six ton tank, but you're getting super electrocuted and launched 20 feet into the air. You're not coming out of that okay. 100%. And it's not like there's an ambulance that's going to come pick you up after. Yeah, that, I mean, that, and even Superman, when he's fighting in, in the death of Superman, when he's fighting, uh, uh, what's his face? Fucking, oh, Doomsday? Uh, Doomsday. You're going to tell me that they're blowing up half a freaking... He did, he, Doomsday, I'm, I'm sorry, Superman does do a lot of stuff to try and save people, and that's part of why he can't fight, Dooms, fight Doomsday super effectively in that film, though. Like, when they're on the bridge, he does a lot to try and, like, he saves the kid. He's, like, you know, trying to make sure the whole bridge doesn't fall. So in, Superman's yeah, at least trying in, in that aspect. In the Superman movie, The Man of Steel, he, he's fighting Zod. Mm-hmm. They blow a hole through Oh, a lot Wayne, of people died. Wayne, yeah, a lot of people died. They yeah. blow up that gas station. Yeah, it's like, on. you know, you're just, you know, you're Dead. Joe in Kansas just filling up your tank. Dead. You know, put two on pump six. Never made it out. Yeah, I mean, Spider-Man, and even referencing the put Spider-Man two, game, you know, Spider-Man <laughs> game, which I think is kind of funny, is you're kicking people. So I know where you're going with this. Yeah, you're you, know kicking, exactly. you kick people off the cliff, off the side of the building. It's over. But somehow they're stuck. To yeah, the, it's bullshit, but at least they tried. It's definitely I think, I think bullshit. that was patched in. Oh, it's definitely patched in. They, I I, there was something they realized that they're like, this isn't necessarily true to the character because Spider Man's not going out of it. Spider Man goes out of his way to not kill people. I but mean, I he, will, he just beats up like thugs in the streets. Yeah, for the most part. But he doesn't, he's not even. Which he's is not the same even, thing you said about Batman last week. Yeah, but he's not it's as brutal thing. as Batman. Batman's going and purposely breaking your bones because he doesn't right. have superpowers. Yes, correct. Whereas Spider Man's like, I'm going to pull this punch and you're going to get knocked out. Okay, cool. Okay, but, but still, you did say that Batman only fought thugs when... No, no I said Batman fights the mentally handicapped in the street. That's a lie. And then lets them come back. I'm sorry, mentally ill, not mentally okay. handicapped. So, the so there's a difference between, uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a difference, totally. Yeah, Batman's fighting people who should be in a, you know, an asylum, and they just lets them break out, then beats them up, then puts them back in. So, anyway, so back to... <laughs> so, you know, then you have X-23, which, again, that's the female version of, essentially, Wolverine. Yeah. If anyone has seen Logan, I don't think they reference her as they, X-23. I think they do. I think it's a very light reference. Um, which, but if you either, haven't seen Logan, you should probably go see Yeah, you should absolutely see Logan. It's a phenomenal film. It's it's heavy, though. <laughs> mm. Like, there's moments... You, you don't think it's emotionally heavy? There's parts no. of that movie where I was choked up. Like, there's some sad parts in there. Well, you're a bitch. Wow, it's like that. <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 I didn't think. It, I mean, see, I, I'm weird, just in general, and I guess like that stuff. I, I didn't, I didn't think it was like. Gotcha. No, there, there was some parts. Me, like, there's I, a scene with, without going into spoilers, there's a part with Professor X that to me was very sad, and the end of the movie I thought was very sad. The Rock falls. Watch the end of that. The Rock Falls. I'm gonna st- all I'm saying is The Rock Falls. The Rock Falls could be a video on YouTube of Dwayne Johnson tripping over something. The Rock Falls. I don't care. I watched <laughs> it in that movie, and there's a pebble. All right, we'll say the pebble falls. I'm not going to spoil oh, the ending of it. Oh, okay. It's like, it's like an, okay, it's like I know an, what you're saying. Like I know what you're saying now. Sorry. In Inception, does, yeah. does, does the thing start slowing yeah. down? It's like, Fair yeah, enough. The Rock Fair Falls. Enough. I mean, which, uh, anyway, you know, when so when, at back to, you know, when you have these characters that everyone, you know, loves to either love or loves to hate, you know, what if they did take them to a darker, you know, darker turn? And, and, I mean, and it would, it do would, you think it would affect them as characters now? Or do you think it would have made a bigger effect if, if, if they had done it earlier? Because you have the, some stuff like in Flashpoint, which we talked about, where Tom, you know Bruce Wayne actually gets killed, spoiler, and Thomas Wayne takes over the mantle of 
Batman, but he's using guns. He's using frick, he uses like a he machete to like yeah, cut he's, off he's uh, fucking people up. Uh, lizard's hand. Uh, doesn't he fight lizard in that? Who the fuck is he? Uh, uh, oh, Killer, Killer, Croc. Killer Croc. Killer Croc. He fights Killer Croc. Cuts off his freaking tail or hand or something like that. So, um, you know, would it affect the character now if they made that change? Um, yeah, I think now it would kind of take something away from them. I think DC characters especially try and hold themselves to a higher standard, which, like I said, isn't totally practical all the time. But I think as a whole, they they try and do a lot more where they all have this unwritten code that they're not going to kill anyone, which, you know, ties their hands in some cases. Like, Flash should not have a rogues gallery at all. Like, he's got a guy with an ice ray, a guy with a heat gun, like, and he can run faster than the speed of light. These guys should be absolutely nothing to him. But he's holding back. He's trying not to kill them. So I, I think that kind of evens the playing field for some of these bad guys. Um, so I think for DC characters, it would be tougher. Marvel characters, I feel like, will do it if they don't have another option. I think every X-Men kills. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think, I think almost every Marvel character, if presented with the option, would end up killing. They might not feel great about it. I, I think... Who, so Okay, so... Now, you could make the argument that... Prior to uh, the MCU, like the cinematic MCU, prior to that, Iron Man, Thor, the Hulk, they weren't, I, I don't think they were as... They weren't household names. No. As you are someone like Wolverine or yep. even someone like the Punisher. So you're going to tell me that the, those two who don't give a fuck about what they do, they'll kill anybody... You're gonna Those, say they that definitely kill people. Yeah. Thor, you kidding me? Thor's been fighting for thousands of years in wars. Like Thor has definitely killed people. Right. So I guess my thing is like, I think that you know you said before that most of the Marvel characters wouldn't kill if they don't have to, but two of the prominent ones just don't give a flip. No, no, I'm Black saying if the, I'm saying every Marvel character. And apologies if I misworded this. Every Marvel character, if pushed to that limit, will kill. Like, every single Marvel character, they're like, I don't have another choice. I've got to kill this guy or hundreds of people are going to die. I think there's very few Marvel characters that would not kill the guy. You know what I mean? I think most of them, for the most part, would be like, this sucks, but I have to do it. It's going to weigh on me for a while because that's who I am as a person. But they're going to end up taking out the bad guy by any means necessary at the end of the day. DC characters kind of have that code. Although one of the exceptions, though, was actually when you know, Wonder Woman... Yeah, again. I know, dude. I get, I get excited and I hit the microphone. Um, one of the exceptions was when Maxwell Lord was controlling Superman's brain and he was beating the shit out of Batman and Wonder Woman um, had the... Uh, the last sort of truth, truth around Lord, and like you know, she's like, "How do I stop you from controlling Superman?" And he's like, "Kill me!" So Wonder Woman snaps his neck, and then Batman gets pissed at Wonder Woman for killing him. She's like, "What'd you do that for?" And Wonder Woman's like, "Are you fucking kidding?" Like Superman was kicking your ass, and it's Superman, you know. And they're like Lord said, "The only way you know I could stop him was to kill him," so I had to. When was this? This was the beginning of one of the crises. I forget which one it is, because that whole scene kind of splinters the, the trinity of DC, so to speak. So they're all in diff different places. And then once the, whatever crisis it was, I forget it was infinite, final, extra, whatever fucking well, crisis yeah, it was. It's, it's, the first one was, there's crisis on, on infinite, infinite Earth. Earth. Then there's uh, identity crisis, infinite crisis, final crisis. But I, identity crisis actually isn't a part of No, that. I know, I know. Actually, it, it just has think? the same name. I'm just saying okay. they do a lot of crises. I think it's infinite crisis because it's not final. Final crisis is the one where Batman well, gets sapped into a different dimension. Yes. I think it's infinite crisis. Um, cause yeah, that's the one with Superboy Prime. Time. It's the one with Superboy Prime, I'm pretty sure. It's like right before this happens, uh, the, the Trinity disbands because Batman can't bring himself to forgive Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman goes back to Themyscira and Superman's, I don't know, begging Lois Lane. Well, it seems like DC doesn't have a problem making these characters kill in the movies because... Superman snaps Zod's neck. No, but that was a big that was a big deal. That was a controversial thing. Like Superman wrestled with that decision. You could tell even after the film, he felt bad doing it, even though he really Superman fucks up in that film a couple times. Because, in Man of Steel. What? Yeah, because there's at one point he tells Zod how to cope 
with the over the sensory overload, which was his big advantage at that point. Because Superman, granted, has absorbed a lot more of the uh, the solar energy on the planet, so he should be theoretically stronger than all the other Kryptonians have showed up. But once they start realizing they have powers, they're all better trained than he is. They've all learned how to fight their entire lives. They're warriors sent from a different planet. They've got superior technology. His one advantage was the fact that they didn't know how to to deal with the sensory overload. So like he should have used that to his advantage. And in Said, he looks at Zod and goes, yeah, my parents taught me how to focus on one thing, and that way it's not so hard. I'm like, why, why, would, you, why would you tell him that? <laughs> why would you tell him that instead of just beating him right here? Like, you have the upper hand. He might not have figured that out as quickly. But I mean, yeah, and then in... in uh, it must... Yeah, I think it's in... Yeah, it's Batman vs. Superman. You have this scene, which I'm a, I still think it... I think it's a... Like a halluc- halluc- hallucination. Oh, the, it is the night, the is, nightmare right? incident. Yeah, that was supposed to be, I think, a reference to uh, the Justice League movie or a scene we saw from Justice League because Flash shows up right after that. So we'll see if the Snyder cut kind of rectifies that when that comes out. I think next year, twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah, on HBO Max. Yeah, There's so we'll, we'll see. That's pitch. if HBO Max. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I follow I, through with it, but we'll see. I'm, I mean, I'm skeptical. Well, yeah. I mean, they also said so. I read something with. Uh, James Gunn today. Um, shit, what? So he's doing... He's doing the new Suicide Squad, oh, and then he's doing Guardians 3. Yeah, so the, he references um, John Cena's character, and he says, like, oh, everyone's going to love John Cena's character in Suicide Squad. Not to get oh, off, really? to, not to get to I didn't know John here, Cena was in... I, actually I didn't, know I didn't either. And if you could find that, I don't know who the hell... John Cena's John playing Cena's in Suicide, Suicide playing. Squad. I didn't know that. You know, but... I, I will say back, you know, back topic because you have the Green Lantern who, as well. I mean that that they're gonna tell me that guy has never killed anybody. The Green Lantern should be killing people. Like you're in space, like you've got an entire sector of space that you're policing. Well, it should be by yourself, but apparently Sector Two Eight One Four is so busy that there's like four or five Green Lanterns active, you know, from Earth alone. So that's a little weird. And that that but, with that that. The whole Green Lantern thing, if everyone knows, everyone knows he has a ring and he could do pretty much whatever the fuck he wants, he has to be chosen for it, yada, yada, yeah, yada. powered by in, his will. In um, Red Sun, they train a bunch of, like, pilots to yeah, get they, that Yeah, they was, have their own version of the Green Lantern Corps that's um, basically empowered by Lex Luthor and led by Hal Jordan. Yes. Um, and their whole plan to stop Superman is to create a box in an infinite number of boxes <laughs> yeah. Because reasons. I don't know what their plan was after that or yeah. how you even imagine an infinite number of boxes, but Superman makes pretty short work of them. They're like, oh, crap, and that's it. Yeah, and they're shooting rockets. And stuff. So again, so, yeah. you know, the, these, these Hal guys... Hal Jordan's backstory like, in that book is actually pretty cool, though. In In Red, Red Sun? Sun, in the book, he's kidnapped um, as a prisoner of war. They and, do not um, reference that in the, in the yeah, movie. Yeah, they don't reference in the movie, but his, the whole way he survived the experience was he, in his own mind, just imagined if he was going to build a prisoner of war camp to hold the people who captured him, and he builds it all in his head step by step, digging the holes, pouring the cement, laying everything out, and like even imagines the time to take breaks, and that was how he mentally overcame the trauma of the situation. That's a... Uh that's an interesting theory or uh, plot point because again, it's not. It's not in the movie, but that's why he was chosen to to lead the Green Lantern Corps in Red Sun because like he's got indomitable willpower; he can handle this weapon. I would say, I, I, if anybody wants to talk about Red Sun, we could talk for that at a time. That but could I, be our next book. I would say, re, I would say, watch the movie before you read that book because the book can get really confusing, especially because it's it's supposed to be in like. Uh, like a like jer- like a like a uh, it's like a uh, an alternate timeline. Yeah, it takes yeah. place in Russia. Yeah, so he, like the dialogue is kind of strange. Yeah, it gets a little like, wonky. From it gets here a little, there. and there's a little a, some t- weird stuff happens with Wonder Woman in there too. Yeah, like, I, I'm not, we're not gonna talk about that. Yeah, we'll just go, <laughs> go, go read it or watch it. And like, like yeah, they they pull some weird shit out of their ass on that. So so I'm, I have a tweet actually okay. from yesterday from James Gunn. Oh nice, talking about the John Cena. Uh, someone tweeted out suggesting characters he th- they think John Cena should play. Uh, they said Bane, Black Spider, Copperhead, Deathstroke, KG Beast, okay. or Solomon Grundy. To which James, James Gunn responded, A little late for the suggestions considering we finished filming in February, but thanks nonetheless and you're going to freak out on how amazing John Cena is as a character he does play. So he doesn't okay. give it away. But he does say he plays a character 
in the Suicide Squad. I can rock with that. I mean, James Gunn's a great director. I'm glad he's back on board, um, you know, especially with Guardians of the Galaxy after a few of those questionable tweets from a few years ago. So I'm, I'm happy to see him back. Um, but I, I'm curious to see what he does with Suicide Squad. And again, we brought this up a few times in previous episodes, how this is going to tie into the rest of the DCEU, because they I don't know what they're doing with any of these movies, if they're all in separate timelines or what. Yeah, they're kind of, we talk about, you know, they're kind of definitely, they're stuck in the middle of a rock in a hard yeah. place right now. They're going to have to flashpoint shenanigans this to kind of bring it all into to one universe, I think. I mean, how do you do that, though? Like I said, you got like flashpoint. Like I said, it's going to be Barry running through time. To I thought something. that was supposed to be his next movie too. That's if they make it, it keeps getting pushed back. Like it's the same with uh, the Rock is Black Adam. That was like ten years ago. <laughs> it's just yeah. it hasn't gone. It maybe not Which, ten, but so. yeah. But they couldn't. They couldn't have released that before Shazam. Well, they had the plans to before Shazam. I don't think it would have. That's like releasing Venom before Spider Man. Yeah. Well, it's a whole nother. It's a whole nother conversation. But we I mean, do they're, have a. They're they're. They're being lucky doing that Morbius movie. That's a terrible idea for so many reasons. Who, like, nobody knows Morbius off the top of their head. Like, unless you were a big fan of the 90s cartoon, I feel like most people haven't been adequately exposed to that character. So it's a bit of a stretch to throw Jared Leto in there as a living vampire that has nothing to do with Spider-Man. Like, it's just a very strange thing to do to me. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that uh, how that turns out. But uh, before we get to our last topic, let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsors. Why Am I a Nerd Podcast Network has been brought to you by our sponsor, Me Moms. The best breakfast and lunch down the Jersey Shore with three great locations in Wall Township, Middletown, and Brick, New Jersey. Me Moms specializes in unique and fun takes on your traditional lunch and breakfast items. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., you can find more information at www.memoms.com. All right, everybody. So our last topic of the day is going to be ranking the cities that we live in, which personally, I don't live in any of them. Fuck it. Yeah. But well, anyway. most of these. So just to, to go through the full list first, just to give people kind of where we're going to go. Gotham City's on here. Krypton, Metropolis, Wakanda, New York City, Atlantis, Star City, Coast City, Mega City One um, and Doomstat Latveria. So now all these cities have their own various protectors. Obviously, the more notable ones are like Batman, Superman, uh, Black Panther, Spider Man, like for all these different places. I should have gone through and listed them as I was yeah, going okay. through, but whatever. But uh, a lot of them would really suck to spend time in. Like, I would never, ever want to be in Gotham. With the amount of nut jobs running around that are, you know, constantly doing stuff. There's an earthquake at one point. It just doesn't sound like a place I'd ever want to go. So I'm going to say that's close to the bottom for me. Um, Atlantis is pretty far down there, too, because I can't breathe underwater. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I think... I mean... First of all, no one's living in Mega City One. Anyone wants to? That's yeah. Judge Dredd. So yeah. no, no one's fucking going. On yeah, that. where he's he is the law. Like you could do the wrong thing once, and he can literally decide right there if he's going to kill you for it or not. I don't want to live there. Yeah, either. I mean that actually <laughs> might be the last. I'm going to say that's at the bottom. Then Atlantis. Then Gotham for me. No way. Doomstead. Three. No, no, no. Mega City One. No, no. I'm saying Doomstead. Doomstead. You believe it or not is probably the. So here's what I'm looking at this. I'm looking at what happens in all these cities. Where am I going to feel the most safe? Like, where's the least amount of bullshit going to occur? Doomstat is towards the top, believe it or not. Because Doctor, because Doctor Doom isn't going to let shit happen to his own city. Wakanda would have been up there, but it got invaded actually by Doctor Doom. And it got hit with a tidal wave by Namor. All right, so let's, put this, let's try to put this in order. So... Bottom of the barrel, not living there. Get the get Mega the, City One. Mega City One is what? What do you have? Ten. Okay, here? we got ten. So, so yeah, Mega City One's number ten. That's the bottom of the list. Uh, then Atlantis. Really? Can you breathe underwater? Fuck that. Okay, say yes. There's sharks. I don't care. All kinds of things, dude. I'm not living in Atlantis. No. I'm not putting that. It's number nine. Um, no it's way. number nine for me. There's no, no, no way. way. We, have to, we have to come to a mutual decision on this. Oh Jesus! For all of them? Yes. There's no uh, fucking way you're going to put Atlantis above. And look, I understand the whole the whole doom stat thing. All right. But well, you're going to tell me that. Tell you what, at nine, we can agree on Krypton because it's going to blow the fuck up. I will agree with you on that. 
Oh, Which actually, maybe that's... Well, no, but who knows? Because the red... I've always theorized, if a yellow sun gives Superman powers, what if a red sun gave a regular human being powers? We don't know if it does. We don't know if it... I would assume it doesn't, but it would be cool if it did. Like, if I was a human in that universe, I'd be like, I kind of want to check this out. It's number nine. It's number it's nine. nine. 100% number nine. Mega City 1 is not... is definitely a no-go. Yeah. Then we're going with Krypton. Then we're going to go with, again, I'm not putting Atlantis right now. I would, I, if you put the sharks aside, put the whole, I'm afraid of the but that's water. A I'm afraid, that's we're not I'm, talking about birds, talking about octopi just running around ripping your face off. Okay, you look, look at Wakanda. You have freaking uh, weird ass. No, no, no. Well, oh, come on. The, the, the animals aren't inside Wakanda. All the fish and stuff can swim through Atlantis. Wakanda has some animals, but they're not just You're running not around through the You're not going to hang out outside in Atlantis. What, you you everything swim around? Water. Yeah, you swim You're around everywhere. You're inside a house. You're not inside a house. That's not quite the same. Come the on. house is full of water. It's you know, not it's full of water. It's flowing through. I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, That's not eight. It's low for me. That's I would say eight. eight's probably Gotham City. No way. I would put Coast City before that. Coast City had one really bad thing happen. Coast City's low. I'm going to agree with Coast City as yeah, but low. Gotham never has anything bad actually happen. What do you hold mean? On. There's it a j- murderous clown that could literally hold you hostage. Imagine going to the bank and two faces there. Spraying people with acid, and you just wanted to take out a, a you know, withdrawal so you could pay rent that day. Yeah, but it's not getting blown up. Yeah, but you might die. Yeah, but it's not getting blown up. You still might. I say you've got a higher risk for dying in Gotham City than one bad thing happened in Coast State, and it was epically bad, which weighs it down to the bottom of this list. But way more bad things happen in Gotham City. On a daily but Gotham, basis. Yeah, but, okay, bad things happen, but bad things happen in the real world, too. Yeah, but, and I don't go yeah, to those places. I'm not hanging out in Camden. Okay, fine. But. <laughs> fine. We'll put it at eight. All right. Fine. Then we're putting Coast City. Yeah, I'm, I'm with that. <laughs> I was actually going to say that. Coast City should be seven. Coast City, for anyone who doesn't know, was the home of Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern. Uh, super evil bad guy wanted to piss Hal Jordan off and blew up Coast City, which, very shitty. I would not be happy about it, but I believe they were brought back. And on top of that, that's the one thing that happened, which, like, everything happens in Gotham all the fucking time. Okay. Fine. I'll give you the nod on that. All right. I'll give you the nod on that. So, so now, now we're at we're six. six. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Metropolis because yeah. Superman has some of the most psychotic villains so, like, in a sense of powerful-wise. Not it's, psychotic. Yeah, and it's like... It's such a it's such a, a scale here because on a regular basis of like base level crime, I feel like Metropolis is probably very safe. Like there's probably very few like robberies and stuff like that because Superman's there and he takes the time to stop and handle everything. Like if I'm a basic criminal, I'm not operating in Metropolis. I'd rather get my ass kicked by Batman than Superman ninety percent of the time. Yeah. Um, but every once in a while, Dark Side's gonna show up. And right, enslave the entire next, population. The, so, and you have Lex Luthor, who obviously comes up with the most elaborate, crazy. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Doesn't care about anybody else. Yeah. So, so right now we got bottom five. We got coming in number ten. We got Mega City one. Coming in number nine. We got Krypton. Number eight. We got Gotham City. Number seven. We got Coast City. Number six. We got Metropolitan. Number five. What are we going with? We could put Atlantis. I'm, we can go, we can yeah, go I was about to say. Okay, I probably fine. still put Atlantis. We, here. we can go. To, we can go Atlantis at five. I will. I, will just agree with you I just that. wouldn't want to live there. Um, I mean, the fact that we still have. Uh, let's you see. could. I was gonna say you could argue New York City in comic books. Or a lot of bullshit happens in New York City on see, a pretty I'm regular call, basis. I'm gonna call bluff on that because who's who's the superhero of New York City? There's a lot of superheroes in New York City, but that also makes it a big target. The Baxter Building gets assaulted on a regular basis. Avengers Tower on a regular basis. The Avengers Mansion. There's a litany of invasions that occur. Like, it's not... I know what you're saying. You're trying to blame it on just Spider-Man, but it's not <laughs> just Spider-Man. Because there's... I mean, even you saw in this book, even in uh, Enemy of the State, there's dozens and dozens of superheroes that call New York City their home base, which also Fine. makes it a target for attack. So you could, I would almost argue you could put New York under Atlantis. I will give that. Okay, we'll switch that. So we're going to put a, uh, New York at five, Atlantis at four. Yeah. So left, we got Wakanda, Star City, and Doomstat. All right. Um, Doomstat. Yeah. So I'm sorry. We got, I Wakanda, might put Wakanda Star here. C- 
Absolutely. Wakanda overall is pretty safe, never been invaded, um, you know, protected by the Black Panther. Even during Secret Invasion, when um, the scrolls, you know, came, Wakanda was overall pretty safe. But there's two major in- incidents I'm thinking of where they got fucked up. One was Doom invading because Dr. Doom is, you know, that that guy. I love Dr. Doom as a character. The what up? other. What up? Yo. <laughs> the <laughs> other is. Um, uh, the tidal wave that Namor hit them with when he was at war having a personal feud with T'Challa. So I would say those are some pretty, like, there's very little you could do to defend against the tidal wave. Fair enough. So we're down to the final two, Star City and Doomstat. So, damn, I, man. All right, so I see, I see the argument on both here. Yeah. But in it, who, who the hell is going to go infiltrate Star City. I don't think anyone gives a crap about Star My City, point. which My is <laughs> why I think Star City is going to end up winning this. It is. Um, it Star to. City is going to end up winning, but because Doomstat's still going to get attacked. They're still going to have superheroes coming and try and bust it up. But for the most part, I'd feel safe from a lot of things because Dr. Doom isn't, he would take it as a personal affront if his own city got attacked. So I feel like they're under very good protection. Doesn't mean they're invincible. I'll put them into Star City at number one. There you have it, folks. So we have coming in at number 10 is Mega City 1, number 9, Krypton, number 8, Gotham City, number 7, Coast City, number 6, Metropolis, number 5, New York City, number 4, Atlantis, 3, Wakanda, 2, Doomstat, and number 1, the safest city is Star City. Because who's going there? Who the fuck wants to hang out yeah, there? Yeah, like, I'm not even scared of Green Arrow. It's like, whatever, <laughs> bro. Like, <laughs> but that's all we got for you guys again. Once again, thank you very oh, much. Wait a minute. For the- oh, oh, sorry. What? The shenanigans engine ah, of the week. I thought we went through this already. Well, no, we, we mentioned one, but the shenanigans engine of the week this week is actually featured in Enemy of the State. It's Cerebro. The fact that all they have to do is, fo- you know, Psychon can put that on. If they focus on one person hard enough, they can kill them is absolute bullshit. That's what? shenanigans. Yeah. Because uh, Rachel says it at one point, when Wolverine wants her to kill the president of the United States and gives a timeline, yeah. and there's, like, a shit ton of superheroes patrolling D.C., they got everything locked down for, like, 15 miles, Wolverine goes to the uh, to the Xavier Mansion, breaks in, yeah. kidnaps Rachel, and she's, yeah. he's like, put this on, focus on the president so you'll kill him. I don't remember that, and yeah. I just finished this two days ago for like the third time. <laughs> it's it's shit. Even in the movies, I'm like, that's bullshit. Like, and if you Rachel, focus too Rachel hard is, on something, they Rachel die. Rachel is Cyclops' daughter. Yeah, Cyclops and Jean Grey's daughter, but she might be a clone. I mean, X Men gets confusing. With they never like touch that. base yeah. on that. Maybe one day. But before we actually wrap up, then what are we reading next week? That's up to you. Do we leave it to the comments, or we can say our our backup plan is Red Sun? I think it's about time we do a DC book. Should we start off something light? Something simple? Yeah, what do you want to go with? We can just do the killing joke. Something light and simple. It's a simple read. Okay, but it's not light. It's light. It's not light. I wouldn't say it's light. Like, this is a very dark book. Here's a lot of. We'll compare the killing joke film to the killing joke comic. I like that a lot. I'm all about that. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So, anyway, once again, guys, thanks, everyone, for listening. You can find us at Yo What Up Comics on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, Instagram at Why Am I a Nerd Official, Facebook.com slash Why Am I a Nerd, as well as YouTube.com slash a bunch of symbols because... We aren't verified yet. Please, for the love of God, like, follow, comment, subscribe. Do everything in your power just to give us some traction here. Please and thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So, without further ado, I'm Cameron James. This is Matt Ferreira. Until next time, we're out. Thank you.